Good afternoon all, Camelback Trading 2724 coming to you this Wednesday afternoon, May 20th. We're looking at the market profile of the SPY ETF here on Window Trader. And another good day for the bulls. So after yesterday, attempting to push down, going out with a price probe, gets firmly re rejected. We open at the upper end of the range, upper end of value. Never see below the opening except one penny in J period. We close up one and three quarters percent. We had a chance for a trend day up, did not happen. We do have a poor high. We end 10 wide, higher value all day, light volume, 72 million right now. We're averaging 100. So again, that's the one negative with this market going higher. We're not getting any more volume added onto it. So again, a higher price is cutting off volume. We've had tight range today, only $2 and change. We have three parks. Now this one was only eight on Monday. I like nine or better, but we had eight. We had 11 yesterday, that's a naked park. We have 10 again today, all within a couple of dollars of each other. It tells me whoever wins that above it or below it is going to get the next push. Sellers again today with another tweet about Chinese firms being delisted from the uh, American exchanges. They attempted to push it down. It absolutely took the entire tempo out of the day. Now, the tempo was slow, but we knew which way it was going. That was up. And once the tempo get, once these algorithms get agitated, they're just like little little children throwing a tantrum all over the place. They don't know what to do, and that's what they did for about a three-hour period. And they kept forcing it and forcing. And I'll go over my trades and tell you what happened. But lo and behold, they couldn't even get below the opening, and we closed not far off the highs. Okay. As far as trades today, the room had a good day today. Took a short in A period, not because I thought the market was going to come in with the indices up so high, but I thought we went back and forth through the opening a couple of times. I thought if we get below the opening, we should get that 11 wide. That's a very prominent park from yesterday. Took a quick short, tape it off, got out of it for, for very little because... Once we got back over the opening, that was over. So just a, a small short based on that. Then my next three trades were all long. Got long in B period. We got above. We took out, obviously, yesterday's high. A took out that high. Got on board again above A. Rode that up for a nice one. We had single prints in C period. Got on board. Took that back up. Again in D. Got long. Watched it. It popped the top, got long. I had small left. We actually, I stopped one time framing up in the SPY. We took it out by two ticks. You can't see it on here, but we did take it out by two ticks. I had very small left, got up, and then it went back up again. Now, F period turned out to be a very nice trade. And we were talking about it in the room, and we nailed it, and I called it on the head. E period, we had uh, the singles. That was still down here. E had the poor high, and you can tell that it was having trouble up here. So F started. I'm like, you know what? If F period starts and pops, I'm taking a short for a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't think it's going to take out the high. Number two, if it does take out the poor high, I think it's going to come right back in, and I don't mind adding. Not because the market's bad, but I thought the market was tired. We would stop the one-time framing up. Look for an afternoon pullback low and or the single print fill. As soon as F popped, took a nice size trade, and boom, that's what it did. It was a very nice trade. And then later in the time frame, I got long in F around B's low. So I got long around the low of B. G open went lower, right? I still took a nice trade. I added on to it and took it back. So we had nice ones there. I was looking for the afternoon pullback low. Now, we never had one. I'm using K as actually as an afternoon rally high. Not thrilled about it, but I'll use it. J was just too close to the day's low. So we never had an afternoon pullback low because the algos got agitated. But what did the algorithms try to do? G, H, I, and J. Kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing. But what 
value higher with the indices high, they could not get below the opening. You knew at some point they were going to give up. I actually went long in J again uh, towards the low, took that up. And then I said, the longer they stay down here, right? So F's flush out were, were longs, right? Those were weak longs that got out. We never had an inventory adjustment. Overnight was long. The day was long. So we finally got the flush out. But then after that, G, H, I, and J, and part of K, was all a, um, a, a matter of after that headline came out about the Chinese stocks of trying to force us down. So this, these were all shorts. That's all that was. And what were they getting for their money? We couldn't even get it below the opening, let alone the day's low. And I said to the room, the longer you stay down here, the more at risk they're going to get. And if you go and take out a high, it's going to pop. That's what it did. Now, when K started, there was horrendous structure on the way down. I did take a put play way too early. Took a couple of them, actually, right before we took out J's high, but they were small. And then K popped J's high, and what happened? All the shorts ran for the door, and as soon as we got to around the high, basically said, okay, this is just short covering. There's a lot of poor structure below. I'm comfortable. Took a sizable put play here. Came down a little bit, L came in, I took a little off, added it right back on, and then wrote it down in L. It was a perfect, perfect play against the algos. Again, you're not going to be faster than the algorithms. You need to be smarter. These are machines fighting each other, trying to push it down. They got nothing. They took it up. They got out of it and went right back down. And then that was the last trade I did. It was a good day. Okay, destinations for tomorrow. Upside, first one will be, I'll use K's high as 297.43 as an afternoon rally high. Then we have today's high of 297.87, which is also a poor high. Then 298.78 daily high, and then filling the gap at 300.01 from March 6th. And then 304.18 afternoon rally high from March 5th. For the downside, we have 10 wide at 296.72, first destination. Then we don't have anything until today's low of 295.57. Then the Naked Park, which is now a downside destination of 295.21. And then yesterday's low of 291.95 and filling that tremendous gap all the way down here at 286.33. Now let's go to the charts. Monthly. So this is the third day now. We've had an inside month up. This time, it's successful. So we've been above it two days, below it one day. Today, we closed above it, right? 294.88. So we're above it by $2. Not bad, right? Not great, but not bad. They're still above it. We're in balance above the trend line. Weekly, two days to go in a the week. They're trying to close above this three-week balance. If you do that, that's, this, that's getting distance away from the previous balance. Maybe you have a chance to go higher and stay away from the 287 level. And then on the daily, again, you can call this, I'll call it a three-day balance now since we closed above this huge balance. So we'll use just these three days, right? Again, the big thing for me is after a huge up day, the sellers yesterday had a chance to try to get into it. They did barely. Failed on the price probe, and then again today, couldn't get anything. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the market wants to digest a little more before it goes for this 200-day moving average and this gap. But I would think the odds are pretty good. We see the 200 and that gap fill before this gap fills. I would think the odds of it are pretty good. I hope you had a good day trading. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Have a great night, and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.